In the year 2000, Tanja Ostojic, an artist from Serbia, a country that doesn't belong to the European Union, posted this online ad, accompanied by the caption, looking for a husband with EU passport. For several months following the call for a spouse, the artist exchanged hundreds of letters with dozens of candidates, some mostly men, one woman, until finally she decided to marry a German man. A decade later, on the National Day of Spain, Peruvian artist Daniela Ortiz staged a very different kind of performance in Spain. It was a simple but radical gesture. The artist removed a commemorative floral arrangement, this totally kitschy replica of the Spanish flag, from the foot of Barcelona's Christopher Columbus Monument and relocated it to the city's immigration detention center. What do these two artworks have in common? Working at the intersection of performance art and activism, Ostojic and Ortiz are both highly critical of the European Union system of migratory control. In the age we live in, the age of migration, migratory control is a major global concern. More and mi more migrants are perceived as political enemies and violent threats, conceptions that deeply influence anti-immigration attitudes and policies from the Syrian refugee crisis to the US-Mexico border. In the EU, anti-immigration law is increasingly and overwhelmingly tied to race and ethnicity. What I'm interested in is looking at the relationship between the EU's approach to migratory control and European colonial practice, focusing on the ways that art can draw attention to this relationship. In my thesis, I argue that these two artworks emphasize that EU migratory control is in fact an extension of colonialism. For instance, while historically colonialism involves the examination of bodies, dimensions, behavior and difference in relation to the Western European exemplar, EU membership entails the detailed examination of candidate countries and the way they function. In her project, Osic becomes a metaphor for Serbia as potential husbands, EU citizens, are given access to her anatomy and are permitted to examine the way she functions. The artist deliberately replicates colonial and paternalistic relations because she can't do it alone. She needs a husband in order to become an EU citizen, mirroring the fact that geographically European, non-EU countries like Serbia are often regarded as children in continual need of guidance and supervision from the European centers of power. Ortiz's performance also functions as a metaphor. In connecting the two sites, the Columbus Monument and the detention center, the artist draws a visual and conceptual link between a famous colonizer and present day migratory control. Her work was performed on Spain's National Day, which honors Columbus's arrival on American soil five centuries ago. Within just decades of his so-called discovery, 80% of the Latin American population died as a result of conquest, harsh labor, European born diseases, violence, and extermination. Today, Latin American migrants, many detained within walking distance of the Columbus Monument in Barcelona, are subjected to violence, torture, and even death. Ironically, the same year Ostojic posted her online ad, despite the exclusions she was addressing, the EU adopted the motto, unity in diversity. And the year after Ortiz's performance, despite practices like the detainment she was critiquing, the EU was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. This goes to show that what's official, what's recognized, what's celebrated often veils the truth. From scrutiny to violence, from exclusions to human rights violations. Through art, activism, and provocation, Osic and Ortiz expose these realities. They remind us that, indeed, the EU promotes unity and peace, just not for everyone. Thank you.